This is WCNY's The Capitol Press Room, and we're joined in the studio at the Capitol by Javidan Rodriguez, president of the University at Albany. Welcome back to the show, President Rodriguez. Thank you very much, Dave. It's great to be here. So I want to start by following up on a conversation we had in August of last year when we were discussing uh, UAlbany's reunification with the College of Nano Science and Engineering. Hopefully I didn't leave out any of the titles there. Um, at the time, you said you were four months ahead of schedule with the merger and still waiting on some regulatory approval. So where do things stand now? Since we last met there, we've moved very quickly and a lot of exciting things happening at the College of Nanotechnology, Science and Engineering at the University at Albany. There's been approvals of BS degrees in nanoscale engineering, environmental and sustainable engineering. They received, I should say, a bit approval. So that's a great process forward. We just recently established a partnership with CNSE and Deep uh, How to adopt their AI video training platform to train workers on sort of the complex engineering and technical skills needed to operate data centers and clean rooms using semiconductor manufacturing. Since then, we also, UAlbany and CNSE, were named principal partners for a $40 million grant for the Northeast Regional Defense Technologies Hub, or NORTEC, funded by the Department of uh, Defense and the CHIPS Act. And that's a partnership with New York Creates, Cornell, RPI and IBM, and of course, UAlbany. Enrollment is growing uh, in the college, and so we see a lot of very positive steps there. And pretty soon, we'll be opening the new home for the College of Nanotechnology, Science, and Engineering, which is in the old Albany High School, what used to be the former Albany High School. The dean has already moved in and her staff, and so this is a state-of-the-art $80 million renovation project to move in parts of the CNSE College as well. So again, a lot of growth, a lot of changes happening, and we're just excited about what's happening with Albany, CNSCE, Albany, and our partnership with New York Creates and Albany Nanotech. You mentioned uh, growth and the idea of uh, enrollment numbers. I'm curious, what are your short-term and, and long-term prospects in terms of student population uh, tied to this merger? So the goal for the, the College of Nanotechnology, Science, and Engineering at UAlbany is that we will continue to grow uh, enrollment at both the undergraduate and graduate level. There's a number of additional programs that we're planning mm -hmm. to embed within the College of uh, Engineering. Our next really focuses on um, mechanical engineering and uh, megatronics or robotics, if you will. And so we will plan to continue to grow this college at the undergraduate and graduate level. We're hiring new faculty as as part of the artificial intelligence that we discussed last time, we're already adding new faculty in AI as well. So the goal will be to continue to expand, build the college in terms of student enrollment, in terms of the number of faculty that we have in the college, and the number of academic programs that we're offering. Well, sticking with opportunities for growth, I'm curious what the closure of the College of St. Rose means for your potential student body population in 2024. Do you have a sense of what numbers will particularly be growing as a result of that directly? Uh, first of all, right, it's a very sad situation where any institution of higher education closes and much more an institution that has been a fabric of our community for 105 years. And that is the case of the College of St. Rose. So, you know, our hearts go out to uh, the faculty, the staff, the students, the administration. And New Albany has been working very, very close with the College of St. Rose. About 80 percent of their programs match the programs at the university at Albany. You may know that we recently got approval uh, from SUNY and New York State Ed to offer three teacher certification programs at the University at Albany to try to provide a home for those uh, students in teacher preparation in the College of St. Rose, which is the largest, if not the largest, in terms of teacher ed preparation in the state of New York. And so our goal is that many of those students will transition over to the University at Albany. And for us, this is going back to our roots, right? We were founded a hundred and eighty years ago as a normal school, a teacher at school, and so we're going back to our roots while maintaining our research one enterprise. So we're working with St. Rose on a number of programs and trying to get as many students as we can, but students really have broad options in the capital region and beyond, but we, we're, it's hard to determine how many students will be coming to the University at Albany at this stage. We are, they are in the process of applying. We're seeing applications growing at both the undergraduate and graduate level. And so we think that UAlbany will continue to be a great
great partner with St. Rose and provide a home for those students and potentially for some of the faculty and staff as well. But can you ballpark it? Is it a dozen kids who might come over or should we think hundreds of kids or should we be saying thousands of kids? What's sort of the general thinking that you're trying to be prepared for at least? Uh, we're thinking in the hundreds, right? Okay. So right now we've gotten close to 175 or so applications from the College of St. Rose uh, at both the undergraduate and graduate level. And we expect those numbers to continue to grow now that the teach out programs are all set and approved we expect that to continue to grow. So I think we're talking in the hundreds. Has College of St. Rose women's basketball coach uh, Will Brown asked if he can come back too? Uh, no comment on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was reported that U Albany and St. Rose had at least some level of discussions uh, about a merger. And then any sort of merger, though, would have required uh, to take on some sort of debts or, or, or liabilities that St. Rose had incurred. So I'm curious, how close... Did those talks get in terms of finding a deal? And were the idea of taking on those debts and liabilities a major stumbling block to realizing any sort of uh, agreement? Listen, we knew from, from the very beginning that a merger uh, in the true sense of the form was not going to be possible. So we knew that uh, from, from day one, right? Uh, the University at Albany would not be able to assume the debts and the liabilities associated with the College of St. Rose. Then, you know, the conversations were about how do we build and strengthen these partnerships and how can we help uh, the students in the College of St. Rose be able to complete their education elsewhere, and in this case, the University city at Albany. Well, for listeners just joining us, this is the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with the University at Albany president, Javidan Rodriguez. In January, the governor rolled out the idea of a consortium of New York uh, higher education institutions uh, coming together to advance developments in artificial intelligence. There's a lot of buzzwords that have been thrown around in press releases and from the governor, and I have a tough time translating those. So I'm hoping you can kind of put into uh, words that I can understand as a lowly Geneseo graduate. What is actually envisioned with this consortium, and, and what's you Albany's role in it? Let's let, let's clear this up, right? A great Geneseo <laughs> okay. graduate, right? Part of the SUNY family, so uh, you're more than welcome into the SUNY family. I so, appreciate uh, that. Let, let's keep that, you know, pretty high. It's not up like there. I went to Binghamton, huh? It's not like I went to Binghamton or anything. Uh, well, let's not get into those conversations. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? Let's just keep you got a great education from a great SUNY uh, institution. But you know, let me just start by saying that, as you know, the University at Albany has making been making great investments in artificial intelligence. For example, back in October, Governor Hoku announced a $20 million collaboration with IBM to establish a new Center for Emerging Artificial Intelligence Systems at the University at Albany. Mm -hmm. IBM just established uh, the first AI unit, uh, Artificial Intelligence Unit at the University of at Albany, which is the first of its kind in, in institutions of higher education. Uh, we've been working and we were just named by the Biden administration to join a U.S. artificial intelligence Intelligence Safety Institute uh, Consortium. So you, the University at Albany is making great, great progress in that space. Uh, we have the AI Plus Initiative, which allows students to, if they wish, to uh, be exposed to AI across the curriculum, no matter if you're studying sociology or political science or chemistry or biology or engineering. Mm -hmm. And we did a cluster hire for 27 faculty members, of which we've already hired 19 across all colleges and schools. All that to say is that we've got great, we have great strengths at the University at Albany in terms of artificial intelligence. So the governor announced this major initiative, Empire AI Consortium, which brings together the SUNY institutions, CUNY institutions, and a series of private institutions to really think about how uh, the state of New York becomes the leader and a model state for the development and implementation of AI. And so the idea is that all these institutions will be able to participate and collaborate in thinking about what is the role of AI in different issues. And I can tell you, for example, from the University at Albany, we have AI-powered research to expose illegal logging, for example. We have chemists trying to use AI to analyze and identify preclinical signs of Alzheimer's disease. 
So you could see the impact that AI can have in a number of areas. And, that, and that's only talking about the University at Albany. When you bring this AI Empire Consortium together, you can see the magnitude of the power that we can have in order to study these and other issues, always looking at the public good, right? And how to use AI in an ethical way that benefits our communities. And so I've heard that Buffalo is the site that's under consideration for this. So does that mean... Albany sends some people there? Do you guys just communicate remotely? What does it mean, though, to collaborate in the future? What do you envision that looking like? The collaborations will involve uh, significant research collaborations across the institutions. For example, we're partnering with Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute on a number of initiatives. We hope to do the same. We have some partnerships with uh, SUNY Polytechnic Institute. And so the expectation is that these research initiatives will allow us to bring together faculty and researchers across these colleges across the state of New York and beyond to better understand and analyze these critical issues. Do you envision there being an opportunity for some sort of either collaboration when it comes to degrees and research opportunities? Could, say, a UAlbany student uh, learn from a professor in another institution or potentially engage in research there? Or is that maybe a bridge too far and it's primarily on developing technology and, and that's how the consortium is viewed? The consortium, in my view, is much more than technology and it's much more than infrastructure, right? It's about developing meaningful and impactful research so I can see, right, uh, these institutions collaborating. I can see our faculty collaborating with faculty at the university at Buffalo or Stony Brook or Binghamton or any of the private institutions. You know, and as you think about sort of reaching further into the future, there's many opportunities for collaborations to develop interdisciplinary and inter institutional academic programs. But I can tell you from the start that the goal is to develop proposals that will be funded by the National Science Foundation and others in the CHIPS Act, et cetera, to build these uh, research collaborations. Well, finally, as a lapsed sports fan, I'm curious what the proliferation of name, image, and likeness agreements has meant for you, Albany, and curious just what sort of challenges or opportunities has it created? Well, I think it's created both uh, challenges in terms that, you know, students uh, see the portal uh, and see other opportunities at other institutions of higher education. So we have to constantly be working with our students to provide them uh, the services, right, uh, the support that they need so they remain at the university at Albany. And on the other hand, the portal, for example, has provided us the opportunity to recruit uh, national talent to the university at Albany. So we continue to navigate these issues, the challenges and the opportunities that it presents to us. And we're looking at what are the opportunities? How do we use this to make our uh, athletic program stronger, right? As you know, you know, the U Albany uh, football team for the first time in its history, right? Went to the semifinals. That's pretty cool, right? And uh, pretty powerful. And so we look at these things as trying to build on the opportunities that we can develop to strengthen, expand, and build our programs. So are you looking for like Albany businesses to really step up in their recruitment efforts, have like Son of Eggs offering some sort of deal to like become the big sponsor there or Lark Street could be, you know, be the official sponsor of the next kicker at the U Albany football team or something? You know, we never turn down any support that we can get from industry, from agencies that want to support the Grain Dane athletic uh, teams. And so that's part of my job, right? Philanthropy to generate funding for the institution and for academic and athletic programs. And we're always happy uh, to receive that support. And we do receive quite a lot of support from Albany and the Capital Region. Well, we've been speaking with Javidan Rodriguez. He is the president of the University at Albany. President Rodriguez, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate being here. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information.